Welcome back to Modern Geometry. Today, we are going to learn about the axiomatic system. The history of mathematics tells us that our ancestors used mathematics to describe the earth. No wonder that geometry is referred to as the study of Earth's measure. As we all know, geo means Earth and metron means measure. The etymology of the word geometry tells us that the subject was originally about the Earth's measurement. It is no surprise then that some mathematicians tried to literally measure the Earth. Take Eratosthenes as an example. He tried to make use of the fact that the rays of the sun are parallel and he used the assumption that the earth is a sphere. Uh, with these assumptions, he was able to come up with an approximate measure of the earth's circumference. However, these days, uh, geometry as a subject is not just about the measurement of the earth. We, we go beyond that notion that we are just going to measure the earth. Geometry is an axiomatic system. We deal with axiom, theorem, corollary, lemma, undefined terms, postulate. Axiom and postulate have similar meanings. It means that these propositions are accepted to be true even if we don't have a proof. Today, the word axiom and postulate are used interchangeably, but in the development of geometry, however, the word postulate was used for an assumption confined to a particular subject, for example, geometry. Whereas, when we speak of axiom, it denotes a universal truth, a more general assumption that is applied to all mathematics. Theorem needs to be proven. Corollary and lemma are in fact theorems also, but they are named as such depending on how you present these theorems in text. Corollary is a consequence of the theorem. Lemma, on the other hand, needs to be established before you are going to present a theorem on, uh, which is dependent on that particular lemma. Undefined terms are considered to be the building blocks of geometry. We have three undefined terms and these are point, line, and plane. Uh, these undefined terms are ideas and when we are going to refer to real life objects, we just refer to these objects as representations of these undefined terms and not necessarily examples of these terms. Uh, for example, if I'm going to draw a dot, then that particular dot is just going to be a representation of a point. The tip of the pen, the tip of the pen is just going to be a representation of a point. Now, if you have to think of it, a point has no dimension. Now, how, how can you point out something that has no dimension? It denotes a location, but it doesn't have a dimension, no width, no length, no thickness. That's a point. So it's an undefined term. We also have a line. A line is having infinite length. So you can use this pen as a representation of that line. But definitely this, this pen has a finite length. Um, but with this pen is going to represent uh, the idea of a line. And that line is an undefined term. We also have plane as an undefined term. A plane has infinite length and it has infinite width. So we can make use of a piece of paper. Say I have a page here of the book. So this particular page may represent a plane. So this is just a representation. This is not an example. Once again, it's important for you math majors to master the three undefined terms, point, line, and plane. And these are the building blocks of geometry. We use them to define other terms and uh, to come up with postulates, theorems, and all the other propositions in geometry. The Euclidean geometry is an axiomatic system. And what makes an axiomatic system? We need to have three properties. 
The first one is consistency. The second one is independence. And the third one is completeness. There do not exist in the system any two axioms, any axiom and theorem, or any two theorems of the form P and not P. And this is the description of consistency. It simply means that there are no existing statements that contradict each other in the axiomatic system. Independence, it simply means that each axiom, each statement must be independent from each other. It means that you cannot use one to prove the other. You cannot use one to derive the other. Each of these axioms must be independent. The third one is completeness. If it is impossible to add such a statement, the system is complete. So we say that an axiomatic system is complete if you cannot add any uh, axiom anymore because it's already complete. Those are the definitions. And now, how are we going to test consistency, independence, and completeness? The test of consistency is about creating a model. It states here, if there exists a model for a set of axioms, the set is consistent. So I will show you in the next block how we are going to make a model to show that an axiomatic system is consistent. The second one, the independence is established by using this test. If an axiom set is consistent and if when the statement being tested is replaced by its denial, there exists a model for the new set, then the statement being tested is independent. Let me just point out that the fifth postulate of Euclid is an interesting one because mathematicians have tried to show its independence. What did they do? They denied this fifth postulate they came up with a new statement that contradicts the fifth postulate. They came up with a statement that is a negation of the fifth postulate. And then they replaced the fifth postulate with this negation, with this denial, and accepted the first four postulates. So the first four postulates are considered to be true while the fifth one is negated. And with these new set of statements, mathematicians came up with a new geometry. So it's really interesting that a new geometry was created because independence was established. Number three, if a system is categorical, then it is complete. When we speak of categorical, it speaks about isomorphism. So take note that the Euclidean geometry is an axiomatic system and it has those three properties as mentioned.